The Japanese automobile industry is one of the world's most powerful manufacturing industries. This success was preceded by years of systematic and thoughtful development. The Toyota company can be called a miracle of the 20th century, or more precisely, a perfect creation of human thought, creative and persistent. Never before has a person approached a mechanism with such an effort of will, never strived with such zeal to make his work as fruitful as possible and at the same time as minimally costly as possible. But where did it all start? In this video we will try to figure it out. How did the largest Japanese automobile company appear? From looms to full-fledged cars. Why did the company change the name of its brand? The first Toyota cars. Copying American cars. An entire city is named after Toyota. How did the famous Land Cruiser come about? Scandal with the Jeep brand. The first sports car produced by Toyota. When did true reliability emerge? Tough car tests. How did Corolla become Toyota's best-selling car in the world? And also the rarest and most expensive model of the company, which is sold only in special stores of the automaker. The first world-class sports car. Joint development of Toyota and Yamaha. The birth of legends Toyota Mark II and Toyota AE86 Hakuroku. The most amazing car from a Japanese brand. How the company tried to make a Japanese Hummer. And why Toyota decided to conquer a new industry for itself, robotics. The history of Toyota began with the dream of Sakita Toyota. Born in 1867 into a carpenter's family, Sakita always dreamed of becoming an inventor. He was the eldest child in the family, and according to Japanese tradition, he was supposed to inherit his father's profession. Fortunately, even then the traditions began to weaken somewhat, and therefore young Sakita was able to hope for the fulfillment of his dream. Toyota's area of activity became weaving looms. Already in 1890, he immersed himself in this branch and devoted all subsequent years to it. Sakita did not have any specialized education. He learned by doing. In 1894, Kichiro Toyota was born. Twenty years later, he would help his father develop an automatic loom that would serve as the basis for the Toyota family's new company, Toyota Automatic Loom Works. This will be the beginning. In 1930, Sakita Toyota dies. Management of the company passes to Kichiro. Legend has it that Sakita's last dream was to enter the automobile industry. Some sources even claim that he gave the last order to his son to found his own car company. It's difficult to say whether this really happened or not. So it doesn't matter anymore. The fact is that the patent for the automated loom invented by Toyota father and son was sold to the English company Platt Brothers and Company. The transaction amount was £100,000 sterling. This money was invested by Kichiro in a new division of the company, the goal of which was to create his own car. The first car was built in 1935 and was named the Model A1 and the first Model G1 truck, the Model A1, went into production in 1936. At the same time, the first export deliveries began four G1 trucks went to northern China. A year later, in 1937, the automobile department became a separate company, called Toyota Motor Company. Toyota will not produce its own car from scratch. The company's history begins with copying successful examples of American cars. And this is not surprising, since copying is an integral feature of Japanese culture. It should be noted that it was very difficult to copy. For a long time, Toyota Automatic Loom Works engineers were unable to do this or that job. But in the end, in 1936, the Toyota A8 car was born, which was an almost exact copy of the American Chrysler Airflow. An all-metal body, a windshield without a partition, wheel rims without spokes, everything was done at a modern level. The engine and chassis were creatively rethought with units from Chevrolet and Ford cars. The six-cylinder engine, 3.4 liters, developed 62 horsepower, the transmission was three-speed manual, drum brakes on all wheels. In general, the car turned out to be quite good, solid, and comfortable. 
but given that it was a rather expensive car, only 1,404 copies were produced during the production period. In the same year, the company's first logo was born. The emblem consists of a red Toyota lettering enclosed in a rectangle with rounded corners. Already at this stage, the company adhered to some innovative principles in production. Yes, the Toyota family's weaving company worked on the principle that if one worker had any problems, the entire production would stop. This led to the fact that the likelihood of defects in the finished product was minimized. A similar practice was successfully applied in the development of automobiles. In 1937, Kichiro Toyota decided to spin off the automobile division into a separate company, which would be named Toyota Motor Company. It is immediately clear that in this name in the word Toyota the letter D was replaced by T. Why? Again, there is a legend that tells about this. When writing the word Toyota, the character D is not that easy to write. It was necessary to make nine strokes of the brush, and this number is considered unlucky in Japan. Kichiro turned out to be a superstitious person, and decided that it would be better if the name did not have any aspects that could negatively affect sales, and decided to replace the hieroglyph D with T, which required only eight strokes. And this is already a lucky number for Japan. Thus, a company producing cars was born. Few people realize what the Toyota logo means. The emblem is simple to depict, but quite complex to interpret. Two ordinary internal ovals represent the connection that arises between the hearts of customers and the heart of the company. They also symbolize friendly and strong trusting relationships. In addition, the ovals form a rounded T, the first letter of the founder's surname. There is another meaning. A vertical oval is a needle, a semi-oval is a thread stretched into its eye, a reference to the original type of activity of the company. The third oval of the Toyota logo represents the Earth. After all, the brand is popular all over the world. In 1937, the company was very lucky. A government order for 3,000 trucks followed. This allowed the company to acquire cash for further research. Toyota wasn't going to copy Western cars forever. In 1938, the first Toyota plant appeared in the city of Koromo, which was entirely focused on the production of cars. It must be said that it was built with the same government money received by the company thanks to a large order of trucks. Today the city of Koromo has already been renamed Toyota. In honor of the company, the city's economy is driven solely by the automobile industry, similar to Wolfsburg in Germany, Detroit in the United States, and Togliati in Russia. The headquarters and seven of the 12 factories of Toyota Motor Corporation are located here. Meanwhile, the company's further strategy was to buy out and found companies involved in the production of car parts throughout the entire production cycle. This was done primarily in order to protect ourselves in case of supply problems. By that time, Toyota's supply chain began to develop. Right on time. This supply system made it possible to deliver parts to the warehouse exactly for the production of the car, which prevented the formation of huge deposits of parts. After World War II, in 1947, production of another model began, Toyota Model SA. The SA was Toyota's first true post-war design. It differed from all previous Toyota vehicles by having a four-cylinder engine, previously a six-cylinder, four-wheel independent suspension, previously using rigid axles with leaf springs, and a smaller, aerodynamic pontoon body. In 1950, amid a severe financial crisis, the company experienced its first and only workers strike. After the end of the war, Japan is in an extremely difficult condition. Industry is destroyed, there are no roads, and the population can only afford a bicycle. In addition, Toyota is on the verge of bankruptcy. In 1950, it managed to produce only 300 cars. To overcome the crisis, the company takes out a loan under strict banking conditions. According to them, large-scale cuts are being carried out, causing great discontent among trade unions. The situation is difficult. But the war in Korea gives an unexpected chance. The U.S. Army enters into a large contract for the purchase of 4,679 trucks and their subsequent service. Toyota is saved. 
The quality of cars began to increase noticeably only in the early 1950s, when the company began to develop its own cars. So, the 50s and 60s are between the years when Toyota factories undergo serious modernization. Currently, the company is implementing the Kaizen principles. The word itself is a compound word, and includes two others, Kai, change, and Zen, wisdom. In general, Kaizen is based on the principle of continuous improvement. By the beginning of the 60s, this concept had already been introduced at Toyota factories. In 1951, Toyota introduced another management innovation. It introduced a system for proposing ideas. The point was that any employee could offer his own idea to improve any ongoing process in the company. If the idea was implemented, the employee received a cash bonus. All these innovations become our norm of life today. But this is only the middle of the 20th century. Back then, everything Toyota did was new. All this was later copied by Western companies. 1953 things began to improve in the domestic market, but the Japanese auto industry was still not taken seriously. The reputation was also not up to par. The Japanese were perceived as plagiarists incapable of creating their own car. As we already said when developing the Toyota AA, engineers did not hesitate to copy their American colleagues, even to the point of interchangeability of some parts. However, manufacturers understood that the domestic market was not growing so quickly and it was necessary to export cars to Western countries, especially to the USA. The process of mass motorization was just beginning in Japan, and the appearance of the Toyota Crown was a big step forward for the local automobile industry. This model was developed by Toyota in-house without reference to any foreign product, while other Japanese automakers were still producing copies of European small cars. It is unlikely that the management of Toyota, having given the go-ahead for the production of the mid-size Crown sedan model intended for Japanese taxi fleets in the mid-1950s, could have thought that this car would become one of the best sellers and old-timers of the brand. At the beginning of 1954, the company received a government order for the development and production of a car. The new Crown Crown sedan debuted in 1955 and quickly gained popularity in addition to being used as a taxi. The car joined the fleets of various government agencies, became a work car for representatives of medium-sized businesses, and was also used in some prefectures of Japan as a police car. The model was equipped with two gasoline engines of 1.5 and 1.9 liters. They were coupled with a three-speed manual transmission. The first pancake, however, turned out to be lumpy. Sales were extremely low, and the cars were poorly suited to American conditions. An attempt to export Toyota cars to the American market ended in failure, but subsequently, having drawn conclusions and quickly coped with new tasks, Toyota corrected this. The company will soon launch a six-year reform program, which has resulted in the modernization of new car models. In 1952, the founder of the company, Kichiro Toyota, died. By this time, Toyota had entered its heyday. In the 50s, the development of our own designs, extensive research was carried out, and the model range was expanded. Japanese automakers have received orders to build prototypes of compact all-wheel drive trucks and other vehicles. At that time, the American Army off-road vehicle's Willis Jeep were very popular, so Toyota decided to call its new prototype Jeep BJ. The first sample suitable for testing was built already in 1951. The use of large truck parts in the BJ's design gave the vehicle a very high degree of reliability allowing it to be versatile and successful in the small 4x4 market. The chassis of the Toyota Jeep BJ was borrowed from the 1947 model SB one-ton truck. Therefore, the wheelbase of the new model was 2,400 mm, which is approximately 200 mm longer than the wheelbase of a classic Jeep. Under the hood of the SUV was a six-cylinder B-series engine from the same truck. Interestingly, the engine for the SB truck used in the Imperial Army, developed in 1938, was created on the basis of a licensed Chevrolet Stovebolt 6 engine. Engine power 82 horsepower. It was quite enough for that time without a downshift. For ease of manufacture, the body was the same square as the Willis, 
but at the same time it had a larger body compared to the American, mounted on an extended base, as well as an enlarged to due to the need to install a large six-cylinder engine. In 1954, the company received a copyright infringement claim from the Willis Company, which invented the original Jeep model. It was the letter J that caused the showdown. The Japanese perceived the term Jeep as a noun, which denotes a type of vehicle, rather than a model or brand name. Then technology director Hanji Umihara, in order to avoid claims from Jeep owners, gave the car the name Land Cruiser Land Cruiser. Umihara didn't know that at that moment he had come up with a name for an entire world of SUVs, not just one model. Then he believed that such a name would be good against Land Rover, whose position in the market of third countries Toyota planned to displace. In November 1955, the SUV underwent a slight modernization. Its appearance was slightly modernized, and a long wheelbase version appeared in the lineup. Moreover, in tandem with the 3.4-liter Type B engine, it was possible to install a more powerful 3.9-liter Type F. This engine turned out to be so successful that it was produced for more than 40 years. Meanwhile, the second-generation Toyota Land Cruiser became the company's first car released outside Japan. In addition, the Land Cruiser 20 series is supplied in large volumes to the USA, Australia, and other foreign markets. Just imagine, of all the cars exported from Japan in 1957, 38% were Land Cruisers. The third-generation Toyota Land Cruiser was released in August 1960. For its high cross-country ability and reliability, the Land Cruiser J40 has found wide popularity and legendary status. The recipe for success was quite simple. While keeping the design simple, buyers could choose from a variety of modifications, four wheelbases, and three engine options. As a result of this approach, the popularity of the SUV has increased significantly. Over five years of production, Toyota produced 50,000 cars. Three years later, 100,000, and in 1980 the millionth Land Cruiser J40 rolled off the assembly line. But even though production of the 40 series in Japan was suspended in 1986, it was produced in Brazil until 2001, more than 40 years. Just 10 years after the end of the war, the Japanese economy recovered from the shock and showed the first signs of growth. Of course, the Japanese could not afford a luxurious and expensive car like the American one. But the need for a simple, and most importantly affordable car was clearly growing. Toyota marketers correctly assessed the market situation and in 1954, the company began developing the Toyota Publica. Meanwhile, in May 1955, the Japanese Ministry of Trade and Industry announced a concept called the People's Car. According to this concept, leading automakers had to create a car with certain characteristics, a maximum speed of at least 100 km per hour, a weight of no more than 400 kg, fuel consumption of no more than 4 liters per 100 km, and a guaranteed mileage of 100,000 km without major repairs. According to the preliminary plan, it was assumed that the Publica would receive a layout similar to the Citroën 2CV. That is, front-wheel drive and front engine. In September 1956, the first front-wheel drive prototype was built. Over the course of the next year, it was tested, but Toyota engineers failed to bring the car's reliability to the required level within the given time frame. As a consequence, at the beginning of 1959, designers returned to the traditional front engine, rear-wheel drive design. Another problem faced by Toyota is the limitation of engine capacity. According to the concept, the state provided tax incentives for cars with an engine capacity of less than 500 cubic centimeters. But with such a low power engine, one could not count on satisfactory dynamics. So, by the personal decision of President Eiji Toyota, Toyota Publica received a 700 cubic centimeters opposed two-cylinder air-cooled Toyota U-Engine. Subsequently, tax breaks were never introduced, so the decision turned out to be correct. Toyota Publica had a monocoque body, independent front suspension with double wishbones, and dependent leaf spring rear suspension. One of the interesting features is that not springs, but torsion bars were used as an elastic element in the front suspension. 
This compact suspension has been retained from front-wheel drive prototypes. In June 1961, the Toyota Publica went on sale. The cost of the car was 396,000 yen, which was more expensive than the Subaru 360. Nevertheless, the price was very attractive, given the technical characteristics of Toyota. But despite this, sales were not impressive. According to surveys, buyers were not satisfied with the poor equipment of the car. They could be understood, the car had no heater, radio, fuel gauge, or even side mirrors. In 1963, Toyota successfully updated the equipment. This is how the Deluxe Series cars came equipped with a heater, radio, and folding seats. In addition, a convertible appeared in the same year. The efforts were not in vain, sales increased to the planned 4,000 cars per month. Toyota Publica was important for the company. Thanks to this car, they understood the principle by which people's cars should be created. Then Toyota celebrated the production of the millionth car in its history. The 60s were a period of improving economic situation in Japan, and as a result, rapid growth in car sales. The network of Toyota dealers abroad is actively developing in South Africa, Europe, and Asia. The history of Toyota sports cars began in 1962, when at the Tokyo Motor Show, the company presented a concept that served as a prototype for the future model Toyota Sports 800, the first production sports car produced by Toyota. The Toyota Sports 800 is affectionately called Yodahachi, a short Japanese designation for Toyota 8. In 1965, the car went into actual production, with chassis code up 15, an enlarged engine from 700 to 800 cubic centimeters, and a two-barrel carburetor that increased power from 28 to 45 horsepower. This engine was enough to accelerate the car around the city to 70 kilometers per hour, and on the racetrack to 160 kilometers per hour. Production began with the introduction of the first Honda car, called the Honda S500, the cars entered a market segment that was already represented by cars such as the Datsun Fair Lady and Daihatsu Campagno. The aerodynamic design of the car was carried out by engineer Tatsuo Hasegawa. Hasegawa was an aircraft designer during World War II. The result is a sporty, lightweight and maneuverable car. The Sports 800 was one of the first production cars to feature a targa roof. The aluminum targa roof could be stored in the trunk when not in use. Between 1965 and 1969, approximately 3,131 units were built by Toyota subcontractor Kanto Auto Works. Only about 10% of the total number of cars remains today, most of which are in Japan. The vast majority of the 3,131 cars were right-hand drive. However, about 300 were left-hand drive models built primarily for the Okinawa market. The basic body design, however, remained unchanged. The power unit remained a 790 cubic centimeters horizontally opposed two-cylinder air-cooled engine. Weight was kept low by the use of aluminum on some body panels and thin steel on the body shell. During the first few years of production, even the frames were made of aluminum. Like any good sports car, the Sports 800 took part in racing. Thus, in the 500 km endurance race at the Suzuka Circuit in 1966, Toyota achieved a historic victory. Despite the fact that much more powerful cars took part in the race, they needed to refuel several times during the race. In this situation the Sports 800, thanks to its lightweight body and excellent efficiency, beat them all without ever needing to refuel. Toyota then tried to achieve success in the U.S. market with a new car, the Corona, which they began exporting there in 1965. Production of the rear-wheel drive model began in 1957, and the car itself became the second largest after the notorious Crown. It was this rear-wheel drive platform that later became the basis for a whole generation of Mark II cars, which were originally called the Toyota Crown Mark II. I would like to note that from the very first generation, the Crown was one of the main models designed to conquer the world market along with the Crown. In addition, on the platform of the already front-wheel drive Crown, variants with a modified body and other alternative names were created Carina, Carina E, and other cars. 
The first generation car was capable of reaching a top speed of 105 km per hour, and the front suspension was independent. The body of the Toyota Crown was load bearing, so the weight of the car did not exceed one ton. The second generation of the model, better known in export variations as the Tiara, almost put an end to Toyota's expansion into North America. The fact is that over a period of one year, less than 350 copies were sold in the United States, which forced the management of the automaker to stop deliveries. The reason for this failure was the relatively low dynamics and maximum speed, despite the rear-wheel drive and lightweight body. The third version of the Toyota Crown, whose engine still had insufficient power, nevertheless appeared on the U.S. market in 1964, and the line of bodies was expanded to include a two-door hardtop, a three-door minivan, and a five-door station wagon. The creation of these variations was not without the intervention of the famous Italian designer Battista Farina. At that moment, the company decided to focus on the quality of the car, organizing rigorous tests of the model, during which several crowns traveled more than 100,000 kilometers. The company succeeded, the Corona quickly became widespread and became the most popular Japanese car on the foreign market. The following year, Toyota releases its perhaps most popular car, the Corolla, the production of which continues successfully to this day. The development of the first-generation Corolla was led by the talented engineer Tatsuo Hasegawa. While working on the Corolla, Hasegawa developed the 80-point concept. During it, the car was assessed on a 100-point scale, and the final score should not be lower than 80 points. Thus, according to the engineer, each car should have received a set of balanced consumer qualities. I must say the concept worked and the Corolla turned out to be very successful, without any pronounced shortcomings. For example, it was equipped with a 1.1-liter 60-horsepower engine. This is 100 cubic centimeters more and 20 horsepower more powerful than its closest competitor, the Datsun 1000. In addition, the Corolla could boast a four-speed manual transmission, and since 1967, a two-speed Toyoglide A20 automatic transmission. A very rare option for Japanese cars of those years. Also, Toyota Corolla is the first Japanese car with MacPherson-type front independent suspension. Meanwhile, if we talk about the design, it was tailored according to the latest fashion of those years. The model range also included sedan and station wagon cars. Toyota Corolla appeared at a very good time. In addition to the rapidly growing wealth of the population, the Japanese government has launched a large-scale program to build expressways. Toyota advertised the Corolla as an ideal motorway car, which, given its powerful engine and four-speed gearbox, was true. Meanwhile, commercial success was not long in coming. Already in 1966, the Toyota Corolla became the best-selling passenger car in Japan. And by 1970, about one million of these cars were sold. Tatsuo Hasegawa was right with his 80-point strategy. The Corolla was loved as a solid, reliable, but at the same time inexpensive car. And not only in Japan, but all over the world. The automobile industry in Japan in the 60s and 70s showed stunning growth, models were replaced one by one and became more and more advanced. But there is one model over which time has no power, this is the Toyota Century. Few people in the world have heard of this car. Meanwhile, this is the flagship of the Toyota model line. He was born in 1967, at the dawn of the Japanese automobile industry. The Toyota Century was originally produced with only a V8 engine and was the largest passenger car ever produced by Toyota. This car is used by the Imperial Household, Japan's top leaders and businessmen. It cannot be purchased at a regular dealership, only at a special Toyota store. Moreover, as expected for a luxury car, the cost is very high. The first generation Toyota Century was produced from 1967 to 1997 and was equipped with a 3 liter V8 engine with a power of only 159 horsepower. However, the torque was an impressive 235 newton meters. Then the engine was repeatedly modernized and by the end of production its power reached 190 horsepower and its volume was 4 liters. 
The Century sedan initially did not have Toyota emblems and nameplates instead. The car is decorated with emblems depicting the Phoenix bird. For its time, the Toyota Century looked quite modern, but if the technical content then changed in step with progress, the design did not undergo significant changes. In 1968, the social lifestyle was changing and along with this, the need for personal transport began to appear. This leads to an increase in the frequency of vehicle production. On this wave, the Japanese concern decides to release its Toyota Corolla Sprinter. For the first time, the Sprinter model was released as a fastback. Its feature was a sloping roof without protrusions, which went straight into the door. This car was equipped with a 1.1-liter engine, but despite its small volume the car was quite playful and could reach speeds of up to 160 kilometers, which is why the model gained particular popularity among fans of fast driving. The price of the car was low, and it was sold only in the domestic Japanese market. In 1970, a modified modification of the Toyota Sprinter model was released. A publicity stunt was made in which the decision was to remove the word Corolla from the name. There were no significant differences in appearance between them. The difference was only in overall dimensions. The Sprint era had larger ones. The car was equipped with new engines with a volume of 1.4 and 1.6 liters. In 1968, Toyota introduced to the public a new compact model called the Corona Mark II, which was an expensive modification of the Crown. The car became a real breakthrough in the history of the Japanese brand, reading it of the image of a manufacturer of small state employees. In 1970, the car underwent a planned update, receiving cosmetic design improvements and a new engine, after which it was produced until 1972, giving way to its successor. The first release of the Toyota Corona Mark II was available in three body styles, a standard sedan, T60, a five-door station wagon, and a two-door coupe, both bore the factory code T70. The overall length of the car is 4,295 millimeters, of which 2,510 millimeters is the distance between the axles, and its width and height are 1,610 millimeters and 1,405 millimeters, respectively. For the original generation of the car, a line of four-cylinder gasoline engines with a carburetor fuel supply system of 1.5 to 2.0 liters was offered, generating from 74 to 113 horsepower and from 116 to 172 newton meters of torque. A three- or four-speed manual or three-range automatic transmission was responsible for delivering power to the drive wheels of the rear axle. The first-generation Corona Mark II is based on a rear-wheel drive platform with an independent double wishbone chassis with coil springs at the front and a dependent architecture with leaf springs at the rear. The car has a worm-type steering mechanism and drum brakes on each of the four wheels, naturally, without any electronic assistance. The car has a classic appearance, reliable design, decent equipment, and good driving performance for its age. Its disadvantages currently include the need to order spare parts from abroad and completely outdated equipment. In the late 1970s, the Mark II became the basis for two sedans, the Toyota Cresta and Toyota Chaser, which differed from the Mark II only in interior design options and exterior elements. In Toyota history, the 2000 GT occupies a special place. With this car, the company proved to everyone, and most of all to itself, that it is capable of building world-class sports cars. In May 1963, the first ever Japanese Grand Prix took place. On the brand new Suzuka track, local and famous Western cars clashed. To everyone's surprise, the Japanese performed well. In the class of sports cars with an engine capacity of up to 2.5 liters, the Datsun Fairlady 1500 won, and in the touring class, the Toyota Crown won. Success is undoubted, but to fight Jaguar, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche, a better car was needed. The development of a promising sports car began in 1964. A design department was created specifically for the project, codenamed 280A, under the leadership of Jiro Kono. It included three specialists, chief designer Satoru Nozaki, chassis driver Shinichi Yamazaki, and motor mechanic Hidetaka Takagi. 
Having carefully studied the best foreign models, the engineers decided that the car would have a front engine, independent suspension on all wheels and rear-wheel drive. In addition, Satoru Nozaki presented the first sketches, in which the 280A looked remarkably like a Jaguar E-Type. Meanwhile, Nissan and Yamaha were already developing a similar sports car, Project A550X. It was supposed to replace the current generation Datsun Fair Lady. In fact, the development was led by Yamaha engineers. They took the Fair Lady chassis as a basis and also developed a promising 2-liter engine. But the further the work progressed, the more the Nissan people lost interest in it. In 1964, three prototypes were ready and around the same time Nissan left the project for economic reasons. Be that as it may, Yamaha had a strong desire to see the work through to completion and began searching for a new partner. The company's president, Jenaki Kawakami, learned that Toyota was developing a GT Coupe and approached it with a proposal. Assessing the high readiness of the Yamaha prototypes, Toyota management agreed to join forces. In the fall of 1964, the entire Jiro Kono engineering group moved to Shizuoka to work at Yamaha. As a result of hard work, the prototype of the future Toyota 2000 GT was ready in just 10 months. It received the suspension and brakes from the Yamaha A550X and the frame and body from the Toyota 280A. The engine used was a serial six-cylinder from Toyota Crown, but with modifications by Yamaha Mechanics. In August 1965, the Toyota 2000 GT was introduced at the 12th Tokyo Motor Show, where it created a great sensation. This is the first Japanese car that could compete with the best foreign sports cars of those years, at least externally. In order to confirm the high performance of the model, Toyota carried out a large-scale PR campaign, the climax of which was high-speed testing in October 1966 at the Itabi Test Track. During the races, the 2000 GT set 13 records in its class, including three world ones. Another bright moment in the history of the car can be called its participation in the James Bond film You Only Live Twice. In 1967, mass production of the car began. At the time of its release, the Toyota 2000 GT became the most advanced Japanese car in history. Excellent appearance, powerful engine and excellent chassis, that's what made the car stand out from its competitors. But there was one serious drawback that predetermined the fate of the sports car, its high price. In 1960, the Toyota Toyopit Stout pickup truck was released, which is considered the progenitor of the Hilux model. This car was successfully sold all over the world. Production of the first-generation Toyota Hilux began in March 1968. According to unconfirmed information, the word Hilux is derived from the phrase highly luxurious, exceptionally luxurious. The new name was intended to distinguish Hilux from the purely ascetic stout. The truck had a short wheelbase, rear-wheel drive, and a 1.5-liter gasoline engine. In April 1969, a version with an extended wheelbase was added, and in February 1971 the engine was replaced with a 1.6 liter. In May 1972, the Hilux was introduced for the 1973 model year. The car received a more comfortable cabin, updated interior and exterior. In addition to the 1.6 engine, 2.0 and 2.2 liter engines appeared. The length of the cargo compartment could reach 2.3 meters. Pickup trucks, which have long been considered purely utilitarian vehicles intended primarily for farmers and small businesses, as well as auxiliary delivery trucks for transport, service, and construction companies, at the beginning of 1980 were also widely used as recreational and sports vehicles. These pickups were often painted in bright colors, equipped with chrome parts, a roll bar in the body, and additional lighting on the roof. They were used to transport bulky sports equipment and tourist equipment, and were also used for amateur cross-country racing. The 1970s were marked by the construction of new factories and constant technical improvements of units, as well as the migration of innovations from expensive models where they were originally installed to cheaper ones. Production of such a model as the Toyota Celica begins. 
The first generation was released in the Japanese market in late 1970 and was positioned as a more affordable sports car option than Toyota's previous model, the 2000 GT. Introduced in October 1970 at the Tokyo Motor Show with sales beginning in December of that year, the Celica was a car that emphasized design and driving pleasure. With headlights recessed into the grille and taillights, the car resembled a Ford Mustang, but on a much smaller scale. At the beginning of its history, the Celica was available in only one body style, the hardtop. The SV1 liftback was presented as a concept model in 1971 at an exhibition. With minor changes, the production liftback was introduced in Japan in April 1973 with two engine options RA25 and TA27. A left-hand drive version of the liftback was exported to Europe. After restyling in October 1975, both right and left-hand drive versions became available in other markets. The Japanese version of the GT had many differences from the ET, LT, and ST, including power windows, air conditioning, special trim, but also had in common with the ST version a center console and an oil pressure and oil level sensor, while the LT version only had warning lights for these functions. In December 1970, the first generation of Carina appeared in Japan. This car stood between the smaller Corolla and the larger Corona. Based on the Celica sports car platform, features included reclining seats with built-in headrests, radio, clock, reverse lights, and power brakes. The body styles were two- and four-door sedan, five-door station wagon, and two-door coupe with a folding hardtop. The length of the car was 4,200 millimeters, with 1,570 mm, height 1,395 mm, and curb weight 960 kg. Only four-cylinder petrol engines were used. The transmission was a two- or three-speed automatic, as well as a four- or five-speed manual. In 1972, the 10 millionth Toyota car rolled off the assembly line. Having overcome the energy crisis and financial difficulties, Introducing austerity on raw materials, developing an efficient exhaust system under pressure from air pollution legislation, and strengthening internal corporate policies, Toyota entered the next decade. Toyota experienced a real breakthrough in terms of car exports in 1973, when the world experienced an oil crisis. For Toyota, this crisis turned out to be positive, as the company was able to popularize its fuel-efficient cars in the United States. Further efforts of the company's engineers in creating a car that is comfortable on asphalt and indestructible off-road led to the release of the Toyota Land Cruiser 60 SUV. This model is considered to be the ancestor of modern large Toyota cars. The car received a new body, a comfortable interior with separate front seats, improved sound insulation and many luxury features of that time. It was equipped with gasoline engines of type 2F and diesel engines of type B. A five-speed gearbox also became available. Meanwhile, the Land Cruiser 40 series continued to be produced and remained on the assembly line until 1984. But, of course, by that time its design had already become archaic. A worthy replacement was needed and it was presented in the same 1984 in the form of the Toyota Land Cruiser SUV of the famous 70 series. Indeed, a legend in a clan of legends Essentially, this car was created from scratch and was immediately available in two versions. The first, heavy version of the 70 received the designation HD Heavy Duty. It was the successor to the rugged military SUVs with all the appropriate trappings. In addition to standard options, special vehicles were also produced on its basis for rescuers, doctors, and even miners. And thanks to its literally absolute reliability, this car was also loved by travelers. For example, the spouses Paul and Britta Bogan made a seven-year trip around the world in such an SUV. They traveled through 63 countries across a variety of landscapes, from desert sands to mountains in snowy tundra, and the total mileage was more than 280,000 kilometers. Upon returning home, the couple wrote a letter of gratitude to Toyota. August 1978 launch of the Toyota Corsa model The Corsa model became the first subcompact front-wheel drive car from Toyota. In Japan, 
The first generation was introduced in August 1978. The car debuted in America at the beginning of 1979, and the Japanese reached Europe only in 1980. By the way, in America the Toyota Corsa was called Tercel. The car was produced with three types of engines, gasoline engines with volumes of 1.3 and 1.5 liters, as well as a 1.5 liter diesel engine. The engine could be paired with a three-speed automatic transmission, as well as a four- and five-speed manual transmission. The car had European design and practicality. These features have become the key to the success of the Toyota Corsa. The sporty Toyota Supra means a lot to the company. Firstly, it was this model that helped mark the country with the most progressive automotive engineering on the world map. Secondly, it is the company's most famous model, not counting the Corolla, of course, and the Land Cruiser. And thirdly, it is practically the last hope for the rebirth of the sporty, affordable coupe as a class. The name Toyota Supra carries a lot of information, but the history of this car began with the 1978 Toyota Celica Supra. The idea was the following, to make a more practical trunk than in the standard Celica, and in addition, to lengthen the hood in order to be able to stick the inline 6 from the GT2000 model there. A little later, the company released the Celica XX model in cooperation with the British from Lotus. Some of the components in this car were directly taken from Lotus XL. The modification was produced along with the base one until the generation change in 1981. The impetus for the development of a new branch in the line was the popularity of the competing Datsun 280ZX. To ensure that the public understands that the new Supra is not a vegetable Celica, a 110 horsepower engine with a torque of 136 newton meters was installed under the hood. Later, the power was increased to 116 forces, and in the domestic market there was even a turbo version that delivered 123 forces. The cars were equipped with a 5-speed manual transmission, but there were also versions with a 4-automatic transmission. However, all this cost a fair amount of money. The price of the first-generation Toyota Supra was $32,000 in today's money. No one took the Celica label seriously in the case of the second generation of the model. It was the Toyota Supra, a powerful and comfortable coupe, that we were waiting for. Under the hood of the second generation, two-liter turbo engines with a capacity of 175 horsepower were installed. Some trim levels, mainly in the domestic market, were equipped with a six-cylinder 2.7-liter engine. The design of the second generation was dictated by the wedge-shaped bodies popular in the 80s, but the Supra also had its own feature pop-up headlights. More luxurious trim levels were sold under the letter L, more productive ones with the P nameplate. The second generation was sold until the end of 1986. In motorsport, the Toyota Supra also did not give up, although it could not defeat its main competitor in the British Touring Car Championship, the Mitsubishi Starion in 1985. In 1980, the fourth Corolla body with the Index E70 was released. Externally, the Corolla retained the same design direction, but instead of the old body, a new one was designed anew. In order to increase safety, the designs of the stiffeners were changed, while the length of the Corolla for the first time reached the 4-meter mark. The car's engines were replenished with a new 1.8L diesel unit with a capacity of 65 horsepower and a 1.7L petrol unit. A variety of configuration options, more than five body styles, the safety and reliability of the car did their job, success was not long in coming and by 1983 Toyota was selling its millionth Corolla. The compact SUV Toyota Blizzard, sold in 1980-1984 only on the Japanese market, was a copy of the Daihatsu Taft model. The car had a frame design, plug-in all-wheel drive and was equipped with a 2.2-liter naturally aspirated diesel engine producing 72 horsepower. With The transmission is manual, 4-speed, and since 1982, 5-speed. The second-generation car, which debuted in 1984, became larger, more comfortable and received new 2.4-liter diesel engines, the naturally aspirated version developed 83 horsepower s and the turbocharged 185 forces. 
The second Toyota Blizzard was similar to the Daihatsu Rugger slash Rocky SUV. The production of the model, they were made at the Daihatsu plant, continued until 1990. In the early 80s, the production of the Camry model began. The middle class model has already had nine generations and is in constant demand in many regions, especially in the USA and Asian countries. The very first model, Index V10, was developed not only for the Japanese domestic market, but also with an eye to export. The model was taken as the Celica Camry, a sports sedan from 1980, which was not popular and whose wheelbase was increased by 100 millimeters, plus the fuel tank was moved under the passenger seat. These measures have significantly increased interior space and trunk volume. The body length was 4,490 millimeters. The body was a classic four-door five-seater sedan or five-door hatchback. The following engines were offered, petrol 1.8L, 100 horsepower, 2.0L, 120 or 160 horsepower, and diesel 1.8L, 80 horsepower, and 2.0L, 88 horsepower. Transmissions were five-speed manual or four-speed automatic. Drive is on the front wheels. The base included power steering, electric windows and mirrors, and optionally offered traction control and air suspension. The model was produced from March 1982 to July 1986. In the Japanese market, the model was sold as Vista. On the market, the car had to compete with Honda Accord, Datsun Bluebird, Mitsubishi Gallant, Mazda 626. In August 1986, the second generation of the model appeared, Index V20. The dimensions have grown a little, the sharp corners of the body have been smoothed out a little, and the aerodynamics have improved 0.34. Designed by Seishi Yamauchi. A choice of 1.8 liter, 85 or 105 horsepower, and 2.0 liter, 120 or 140 horsepower, petrol injection engines, as well as a 2.0 liter, 82 horsepower, diesel engine were offered. Transmission options include a 4-speed automatic transmission. All-wheel drive options became available. In 1988, the car was restyled and the GT package appeared. Compared to the first generation, engine life has increased, the corrosion resistance of body panels has increased, and safety and comfort have improved. In addition to the sedan, a station wagon body was offered for the first time. The model was produced in Japan, the USA, and Australia. On May 10, 1983, Toyota released a new budget sports car model, an angular, slightly plain-looking car with a sharp nose, which at first glance did not stand out in any way. It was a modest car, with modest characteristics, which was quickly loved, and which was destined to become a legend, the Toyota Corolla AE86. The car received the playful nickname Hakuroku, which means 86 in Japanese. It was produced in two body types, Levin and Trueno. The first inclinations for this were invested during the creation of the car. Toyota planned to produce a fast, cheap and simple car that would be easy to drive, reliable and practical. It was its price that came as a big surprise. At that time, there was no drifting as such, but there were drivers who liked to go racing on the track or on the street and who did not have a lot of money. It was these drivers who became the main buyers of the Toyota Corolla AE86. Among these drivers was Keiichi Tsuchiya, who in the future would become the king of drifting and lay the foundation for drifting itself as a sporting competition. It was on the AE86 that Tsuchiya learned to drive fast and drift. The car turned out to be very obedient, capable of training the driver, forgiving of mistakes, and was not demanding. Low power did not become a big problem, about 130 horsepower on stock models, Tsuchi and Hakuroku very often competed with drivers in more powerful and expensive cars, beating them on tracks such as Tsukub and Fuji. The second leap in the popularity of the Toyota Corolla AE86 occurred in 1998, when the anime Initial D began to air. In Fujiwara's film, Takumi, driving Trueno, passed faster and more powerful cars on the descent from Akina. 
Keiichi Tsuchiya himself participated in the creation of this animated masterpiece. All the features of the cars that were included in the picture were taken into account, and driving techniques were also given in detail. The anime turned out to be very realistic and interesting, despite the poor drawing, for which it earned thousands of fans, among whom were both ordinary schoolchildren and professional racers. The AE86 has become a cult car. It's worth noting that the price of the Hakuroku almost doubled with the release of Initial D. The next rise of the Toyota Corolla AE86 occurred in 2004, with the release of the game Need for Speed, Underground 2. Despite the modest appearance of the car, after modifications the Hakuroku turned out to be the fastest in the game. The popularity of the game led to the popularity of the machine itself. Now it was known all over the world. Now the bulk of Hakuroku buyers are enthusiasts, hobbyists, and fans. Production of the model ended in May 1987. If you consider that the car is a drift car and it was simply killed for 25 years, then the very fact that the car has survived to this day may be surprising. After purchasing an AE86, new owners, for the most part, immediately send the car for repairs. Many cars are purchased specifically for tuning and nothing more. Now the Toyota AE86 is no longer a car for every day, but simply a legend, part of the history with which drifting as a sport originated. And although more than a decade has passed, small Acherokas continue to drive on the roads and even now can give a fight to much newer sports cars. In the mid-1970s, Toyota began work on an atypical car, a compact and affordable sports car. As a result, the Toyota SAX prototype appeared in 1981, and in 1984 the production Toyota MR2 entered the Japanese market. It was a two-seat, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive coupe with a distinctive wedge-shaped design. In addition to the usual one, there was a modification with removable roof panels. The car received a 1.6-liter 16-valve engine with fuel injection, developing from 112 to 130 horsepower. With, due to its low weight, 950 kilograms in Japanese specification, such an engine provided the coupe with good dynamics. Transmissions are 5-speed manual or 4-speed automatic. The Toyota MR2 with a 1.5-liter power unit, 82 horsepower, was also sold on the Japanese market, but this version was not in demand. In 1987, a modification appeared, equipped with the same 1.6-liter engine, but with a supercharger, which increased power to 145 horsepower. The second generation of the Toyota MR2 Coupe, which debuted in 1989, became slightly larger and heavier. Cars for the Japanese market were equipped with a 2-liter engine, naturally aspirated, 165 to 180 horsepower, or turbocharged, 220 to 245 horsepower. The 2-liter aspirated engine on the European version developed 138 to 180 horsepower. Turbocharged cars were not offered here, and the American Toyota MR2 received a 2.2-liter engine, 130 to 135 horsepower, and a 2-liter turbo engine with 200 horsepower. In 1999, Production of the third generation of the model began in Japan, turning from a coupe to a roadster. The layout remains the same. The engine is located behind the seats and rear-wheel drive. At home, the car was called Toyota MRS, in the USA, MR2 Spider, and in the European market, Toyota MR2 Roadster. The only possible engine is a 1.8 liter, with a variable valve timing system with a power of 138 to 140 horsepower. With, by this time, Toyota had finally established itself as the largest automobile manufacturer in Japan, ranking third in the world in terms of production volumes. In 1983, Toyota signed a multi-year agreement with General Motors, and the following year, car production began at their joint venture in the United States. At the same time, the first stage of construction of Toyota's own test site, Shibetsu, was completed, which was fully completed in 1988. In 1986, another milestone was passed the 50 millionth Toyota car was produced. A new 4Runner model is born. 
The Toyota 4Runner SUV went into mass production in 1984. The car was intended primarily for the American market. The version for Japan was called Hilux Surf. The Hilux pickup truck was taken as the basis for creating the model. In fact, the SUV differed from a pickup truck only in its fiberglass hood and an additional row of seats, and in some trim levels the car had only two seats. The range of power units, which initially consisted of only a 2.4-liter carburetor engine, 100 horsepower, was supplemented in 1985 with the same engine, but with a fuel injection system, which increased power to 116 horsepower. A year later, a turbocharged version of the 2.4 engine appeared, and in 1988 they began installing a 3-liter V6 engine on the SUV. Transmissions, manual or automatic, 4-speed. In 1986, the design of the chassis was slightly changed. Instead of a solid axle, the Toyota 4Runner received an independent front suspension, which improved comfort and handling. The second-generation SUV, which debuted in 1989, had the technical stuffing of a pickup truck, but received a completely new all-metal body. A small number of cars were produced in a three-door version, and most of the SUVs were five-door. Toyotas were equipped with 2.4 and V6 3.0 petrol engines, combined with a manual or automatic transmission. The drive could be all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. The Japanese plant stopped production of the second-generation runners in 1995, and a licensed copy of the car is still produced in China under the Great Wall brand. The production of third-generation cars started in 1995. Externally, the Toyota 4Runner resembled its predecessor, but had a completely new body and a different chassis, this time having little in common with the Hilux pickup. When creating the Runner, the main attention was paid to comfort. The SUV became larger and more spacious, received a spring suspension in the front and rear, and a central differential with the ability to connect all-wheel drive on the go. The list of equipment included airbags, ABS, and since 2001, a stabilization system. The three-door body finally disappeared from the lineup. The power units were also new. A 2.7-liter four-cylinder engine developed 150 horsepower, and the output of the 3.4-liter six was 190 horsepower. With Transmissions are five-speed manual or four-speed automatic. At a time when the Carburetor 7 was the ultimate dream for car enthusiasts in our country, the second-generation Toyota Cresta was released in Japan in 1984, equipped with such advanced technologies that it would not be a shame even today. As we have already said, the Toyota Cross was based on a common platform with the Toyota Mark II and Chaser. Externally, it was a classic sedan with a squat silhouette. Unlike the Chaser, for marketing reasons, the Toyota Cross did not receive frameless glass. In addition, the mirrors were moved from the wings to the doors and were electrically driven and heated. Overall, the Cresta looked like a typical Japanese car from the early 80s. The exterior was dominated by straight lines, and, unlike its 70s predecessors, the exterior decor was modest. On the technical side, everything was more than worthy. There were six engines to choose from, two of which were diesel. The older version with a two-liter engine and two turbines had a power of 185 horsepower and was designated as GT Twin Turbo. This was an innovative engine for Toyota, the first with twin turbocharging and four valves per cylinder, and the first with two DOHC camshafts. He received the prestigious JSME medal for new technology for his contributions to technology. Toyota would not be itself if it stopped only at the engine. Toyota Cresta boasted an electronically controlled suspension. Its shock absorbers could change their stiffness, which ensured high comfort and safety. There were two modes, Norm and Sport, and this magnificence was called TEMS, Toyota Electronic Modulated Suspension. Additionally, a steering force adjustment system was installed PPS, Progressive Power Steering. It had two modes, sport and comfort. All sorts of little things, such as electric windows and illuminated lock cylinders, were a matter of course for Toyota of those years. Yes, the wealth of equipment was simply amazing, and all this in 1984. 
The most amazing thing is that all these complex systems had phenomenal reliability and worked for 20 or even more years. A 3-liter inline 6 with a capacity of 200 horses, a new body design in the absence of the Selic name in the title, this is what the new generation Toyota Supra 3 Malawian Quaches brought to fans of the brand. In addition, Toyota for the first time introduced an ABS system and a choice of automatic transmission control mode on a production coupe. The special version of the Toyota Supra Turbo A is especially popular among collectors. The car was prepared for participation in the Group A Championship. The engine was pumped up to 263 horsepower, which made the car the most powerful road coupe. The car accelerated to 105 seconds and had a top speed of 270 km per hour. No one in the world, except for production cars, could show anything like this. Until Nissan released its Skyline R32 GTR in 1989. But that's a completely different story. One of the main events of the 80s can be considered the emergence of such a brand as Lexus, a division of Toyota created to enter the high-class car market. Before this, Japan was associated with small, economical, inexpensive, and affordable cars. With the advent of Lexus in the luxury luxury car sector, the situation has changed. A year after Lexus was founded, in 1989, Models such as the Lexus LS400 and Lexus ES250 were introduced and went on sale. At the end of the 80s, Toyota seriously modernized its flagship 60 series. This is how the Land Cruiser 80 appeared. The car received a number of new solutions, including spring suspension on all wheels, a modified chassis, and new, even more powerful and reliable engines. On the front panel there is a place to connect navigation equipment, and on the roof, there are roof rails. The Corolla E90 was released in 1987. The car was no longer called a compact car, because its length at that time was 4,326 millimeters. Engineers added all-wheel drive to the platform, finally getting rid of rear-wheel drive configurations. The carriage body was returned for sale. They added a forced diesel engine with a power of 165 horsepower built on a 48 GZE with a compressor. New factories have been built. The sixth generation finished its production at 4.5 million units. In the summer of 1991, the seventh generation, the E100, left the factory. The length of the car still increased to 4,369 millimeters. The shape of the car acquired new roundness, following the fashion of smooth lines in the USA at that time. For the first time, Toyota Corolla E100 receives an award from ADAC as the most reliable car. The 8th generation E110 comes out exactly 4 years after the E100. This time the changes are conservative, due to the economic crisis in the company. From what should be noted is that a new 6-speed gearbox was added to the transmission and it was available only in the Japanese domestic market. Despite this, Toyota Corolla was able to reveal itself in a new form rally racing. The Toyota Corolla WRC Coupe, built on a 3S GTE turbo engine and a Celica GT4 ST205 transmission, won one award after another, including a Monte Carlo Rally prize. Over almost half a century of its development, Toyota Corolla has managed to introduce as many as 11 generations of cars, many of which can be found on our roads to this day. Since its release in 1966, Corollas have won the hearts of many buyers due to their durability, reliability, and safety. Toyota Corolla is one of the best-selling models all over the world. Produced between 1968 and 2004, the Mark II is one of the most popular JDM cars and one of Toyota's finest creations. Over several decades, nine generations of Mark II were released. Each subsequent series was improved and became better, both in terms of design and technical characteristics. Almost 15 years after the completion of production, the model remains in demand all over the world. Meet the legend among JDM cars, the incredible Mark II in the 90th body, the model of this series was produced from 92 to 96. This is a five-seat business sedan with a sporty bias. The car has a strict design, but with the use of body kits it quickly turns into a sports car and rolls sideways very well. 
According to many car enthusiasts, this car is the best option of all generations. Starting with the X90 series, important design changes were made, which became the basis for future modifications of the car, which became the X100 and X110. This version retains the same engine size and transmission as the previous one. The main changes to the Mark II in the 90th body affected the safety, handling and comfort of the car. And not in vain, at one time this modification broke sales records on JDM. This is a reliable and high quality machine that boasts rich internal resources. As is typical for a real Japanese, the sedan is right hand drive and equipped with an automatic transmission. The native transmission is quite durable and can easily cope with engines up to 500 horsepower pages, and it is also sensitive, quickly responding to the driver's maneuvers. Sometimes it happens that the qualities inherent in a car at birth turn out to be very useful for those who use it 20 to 30 years later in another country with its unique automobile mentality. The third generation of Toyota Camry for the domestic market bore the V30 index and was produced in Japan from 1990 to 1994. As before, this Camry was equipped with four-cylinder engines, petrol and turbo diesel, paired with a five-speed manual transmission or four-speed automatic transmission, but the prominent version, in addition to the 2.0-liter V6, received a more powerful 2.5-liter 175-horsepower engine of the same configuration. It was in this generation that the Camry was first offered with ABS, a driver's airbag, and even a fully controlled 4WS chassis. In the fourth generation, the division into Japanese and export versions of the model was maintained. Toyota Camry for the local market with the Index SV40 began to be produced in Japan in 1994. The car was offered only as a sedan, but as before it had the Vista platform model. The cars were equipped with 1.8 and 2.0 petrol engines, as well as a 2.2 liter turbo diesel. All-wheel drive transmission was available in combination with two and 2.2 liter engines. The technical part has not changed compared to the previous generation cars, 2.2 and V6 3.0 engines with a power of 133 and 192 horsepower. With, respectively. In the late 1990s, Toyota Camry Solara coupes and convertibles began to be offered to American buyers. The first-generation Toyota Land Cruiser Prado SUV, which debuted in 1990, was a more compact and lighter version of the Land Cruiser 70. The car had a frame structure, solid axles at the front and rear, front spring and rear spring suspension. The drive is four-wheel drive with reduction gear. The Prado was equipped with four-cylinder power units, 2.4 and 2.7 petrol injection engines, a 2.8-liter naturally aspirated diesel engine, and 2.4 and 3.0-liter turbo diesels. Transmissions are 5-speed manual or 4-speed automatic. The SUV was produced with 3-door and 5-door bodies. The vehicle interior could have 5 or 8 seats, depending on the design. The release of the first generation of the Land Cruiser Prado model ended in 1996. In 2002, the next generation of Prado was introduced the 120 series. It was already an almost modern car. Its design was first developed outside of Japan in the Industrial Design Center of France. In this generation, Prado received a number of modern safety and comfort systems, climate control and a multimedia system with a large screen appeared in the cabin. The Japanese auto industry of the 90s never ceases to amaze. Such a variety of cars were made at that time. One of the most interesting and in some ways even strange cars is the Toyota Serra. In October 1987, the unusual Toyota AXV2 concept was presented at the Tokyo Motor Show. The car doors were called butterfly wings and opened forward and upward. It looked very impressive and at the same time functional, since this design of the doors allowed for comfortable entry into the cabin. But the most amazing thing is that three years later the car went into mass production with minimal changes. Be that as it may, the AXV2 appeared in 1990 under the name Toyota Serra. The name of the model is derived from the French word Serra, which translates as will be. 
Likewise, Toyota focused attention on the futuristic appearance of the model. In addition to the unusual way of opening the doors, the car boasted a panoramic roof. More precisely, doors, because it did not have a roof in the usual sense. Thus, coupled with the glass trunk lid, the glazing area turned out to be very large. So much so that in sunny and hot weather it was very uncomfortable to be in the car, even despite the air conditioning. Many people know about such a legendary sports car as the McLaren F1. Meanwhile, the design of the doors doesn't remind you of anything? The great creator of British racing cars, Gordon Murray, was inspired by the doors of Toyota Serra. This is what he said about it. I drove past it every day. We ended up borrowing the Serra. And we started drawing our design with Bruce McIntosh. The rest as they say is history and butterfly wings can be found in many supercars from the Ferrari Enzo to the BMW i8 and other McLaren models. Despite its promising appearance, technically the Toyota Serra was an ordinary car. It shared a platform with the Toyota Starlet and was equipped with a 1.5-liter 5E FHE engine producing 110 horsepower. Yes, for a car weighing only 930 kilograms, this was not so small, but the chassis did not at all correspond to the sport prefix. But in everyday use, the car has proven to be very reliable and affordable and cheap spare parts will not bankrupt the owner, even considering the 30-year age of the car. Meanwhile, the interior turned out to be quite good. Sarah could offer comfortable seats with lateral support, a three-spoke steering wheel and a variety of options. These include an advanced audio system with six speakers and a CD player. A very rare option for cars of those years. Sarah is a very unusual, but at the same time typical car for Japan of those years. Automakers have not been afraid to experiment with cars for such narrow niches. Toyota Serra lasted on the assembly line until 1996. A total of 15,941 cars were produced. When we say Toyota Supra, most people around the world think of this car. A movie star, superbly prepared already in the basic configuration, the car immediately produced 220 horsepower. Phew! At that time, Toyota offered a bi-turbo version of this engine with a power of up to 326 horsepower, depending on the market. The magnificent 3-liter twin-turbo engine 2JZ GTE remains one of the most popular today. Modern tuners take up to 1,000 horses from it, but in the Japanese market in 1993 there was a gentleman's agreement between manufacturers no more than 280 horsepower. There was also a naturally aspirated version of this engine with a power of 235 horsepower, a six-speed manual or four-band hydromechanical automatic was bolted to it. It is clear that the automatic transmission is not taken seriously in this body and was sold mostly in the States. This was the swan song of the Toyota Supra. The lightest coupe body, the most powerful and technologically advanced engine, the most striking design of a production car, the most dynamic acceleration to hundreds, 4.6s, faster than the Porsche 911 Carrera. And yet this did not save the model from falling sales. The company ceased sales in the UK in 1996 due to low demand, US sales were discontinued in 1998, and the last production Toyota Supra was released in 2002 in Japan. This car is often called the Japanese Hummer H1. Indeed, the similarity between the Toyota Mega Cruiser and the American SUV is obvious. Nevertheless, when developing their car, the Japanese approached the matter with their characteristic creativity and diligence. In October 1993, at the 30th Tokyo Motor Show, Toyota presented an extremely unusual car. It was called Toyota Mega Cruiser and was positioned as a multi purpose SUV capable of operating in the most difficult road conditions. The development was initiated by the Japanese military, who wanted to get a vehicle similar to the American HMMWV. However, Mega Cruiser should not be considered an overseas copy. It had a number of unique features. As befits military equipment, the Toyota Mega Cruiser had a simple and reliable design. At the heart of the machine was a durable steel frame at the base of which the engine and transmission elements were located. 
The suspension of all wheels is independent, on double wishbones with torsion bars as elastic elements. To increase ground clearance, Japanese engineers used final drives, with the brakes located on the axle shafts rather than in the wheel hubs. Thus, it was possible to achieve a ground clearance of 420 mm. This is 13 mm more than a Humvee with a similar axle design. Also, in the fight against difficult off-road conditions, the SUV was helped by torsion and tur-axle and cross-axle differential locks and a tire inflation system. Like its foreign counterpart, the Mega Cruiser had impressive dimensions. The car could seat six people, two in the front and four in the back. In addition, at the rear there was a cargo compartment measuring 1355 by 2050 mm, in which it was possible to transport cargo weighing up to 600 kilograms or place special equipment. Although the car had a wheelbase of almost 3.5 meters, thanks to the 4WS fully steering chassis, its turning radius was only 5.6 meters. For comparison, the same figure for Hammer H1 is 8 meters. Under the plastic hood of the Toyota Mega Cruiser was a 4.1 liter turbo diesel with 153 horsepower. It was borrowed from the Toyota Coaster bus and was distinguished by increased reliability and good efficiency. Like the Humvee, the Toyota Mega Cruiser was initially available only to the military, but a civilian modification, the BXD20, soon appeared. It featured a completely all-metal body, front tail, and a minimal set of comfortable options in the form of an audio system and air conditioning. Nevertheless, the cost of such a machine was considerable. In 1995 it was 9.62 million yen. The high tax class and exorbitant price could not provide the Mega Cruiser with great popularity. In total, about 150 vehicles of the BXD20 version and 3,000 vehicles of the military modification BXD10 were sold. In 1994, sales of the famous Japanese crossover Toyota RAV4 started. More than 25 years is a very respectable age in the world of cars which more than eloquently speaks of its popularity and demand in the global automotive market. Why has the RAV4 won the hearts of many car owners around the world? After all, initially it did not look like any car with a traditional body. At first, the RAV4 was called a hybrid of an SUV and a station wagon, since there was simply no name for such a body. The origins of the creation of a parquet SUV go back to the early 80s. The Toyota Motors Corporation stood firmly on its feet and could afford very bold experiments in the field of automotive engineering, which were only possible by the European concern Audi with its famous Quattro all-wheel drive. The first harbingers of the new concept of ultralight SUVs were the production models of the Toyota Sprinter Carib. The first models had a classic off-road transmission design, plug-in front-wheel drive and a transfer case with a range shifter. Later. This arrangement was abandoned, using permanent all-wheel drive. In new Carib models, the engine was located across the hood. The transmission layout was as follows. The engine, gearbox, and front axle differential were a single power unit. Torque was transmitted to the rear wheels through an angular gearbox equipped with a locking center differential. This transmission scheme became so widespread that in the period from 1987 to 1993, many models were produced with all-wheel drive transmission. For the first time in history, all-wheel drive off-road vehicles were not inferior to traditional road vehicles in either comfort or speed. The popularity of the off-road concept of a universal car began to excite the minds of many world-famous car designers. And so, in 1989, at the Tokyo Motor Show, an unusual concept of a universal car with the unusual name RAV4 was demonstrated to the general public. As the developers stated, its name fully reflects its purpose recreation active vehicle a vehicle for active recreation. Despite its revolutionary appearance, it still resembled a traditional SUV. Even the headlights and grille trim, including the rear spare wheel, more than eloquently spoke of belonging to the class of off-road vehicles. But, at the same time, the traditional beams of the drive axles and the off-road frame disappeared, and the suspension of all wheels became completely independent. The transmission of torque to the drive wheels, including the rear ones, 
was carried out by constant velocity joints, another revolutionary technical solution of those years. Today, without exaggeration, we can say that the appearance of the RAV4 marked the beginning of the era of crossovers, compact cars with a monocoque body with off-road capabilities. The new model had much in common with the 1989 concept. Same body dimensions, door moldings, large glass area. The optics, radiator grille, and bumpers determined the modern look of the crossover for many years to come, ensuring its unmistakable recognition throughout the world. On the economic side, the RAV4 was also very useful. The well-being of residents of the countries of North and South America, as well as Western Europe, allowed many of them to pay attention to the RAV4. It was this car that met their requirements. The power and remarkable off-road capabilities delighted the younger generation. Comfort, compactness, and high off-road seating position appealed to more mature buyers. The idea of a car for the city and a picnic appealed to many people. A new niche has emerged in the global market, which other world-famous players have gradually begun to explore. The boom in popularity of crossovers in the world continues to this day. The main advantages of the RAV4 over SUVs of that era were a lighter and more aerodynamic monocoque body, a powerful and relatively economical engine and a convenient, comfortable interior. The four-cylinder gasoline engine with a volume of 2 liters allowed acceleration no worse than conventional sedans. The torque from the 16-valve engine was transmitted to the wheels using a 5-speed manual or 4-speed automatic transmission. Despite such a respectable age of the model, the Toyota RAV4 always and everywhere turns out to be in place. Once introduced, the RAV4 will remain synonymous with speed, comfort, and reliability in the global automotive market. Ecology has had a major influence on Toyota's development, plans and programs were developed to protect the environment, and in 1997 the Prius model was created, equipped with a hybrid engine, Toyota Hybrid System. In addition to the Prius, RAV4 models were equipped with hybrid engines. The history of the Prius car began in the last millennium, back in 1993. Even then, severe air pollution in large cities, caused by cars, was becoming a big problem. The car's exhaust fumes made the situation worse every day. The task was set to create a good and environmentally friendly car. And the ultimate task. The car had to be sold in all countries of the world. The car had to incorporate the latest technologies and achievements of mankind. The vehicle had to be economical and yet quite powerful. The project was called G21. Toyota has always been bigger on the inside than on the outside. At the end of 1993, the designers made another decision. The inside of the car should be spacious and have a lot of space. And at the same time, it should use as little fuel as possible, since already in those years it was clear that oil prices would rise. The new car could run on both gasoline and electric power. This factor significantly pushed the idea of Toyota Prius forward, one might say into the future. The car has become environmentally friendly, and the volume of harmful substances released into the air has decreased significantly. After much painstaking work, engineers were able to create such a successful car. In 1999, the Land Cruiser 100 was introduced. New gasoline and diesel engines were developed especially for this model, which were distinguished by excellent efficiency. The front wheel suspension became independent, and the steering became rack and pinion. As a result, the driver of a large SUV felt like he was driving a regular car. The interior now has separate climate control for the front and rear seats, a multimedia system and other elements that distinguish a luxury car from an ordinary one. Surprisingly, thanks to their unique consumer properties and excellent reliability, many of the cars are still quite often found on roads around the world. Moreover, on the secondary market they are valued very highly, it's no joke. Sometimes they ask for more for a 15 to 20 year old Land Cruiser in excellent condition than for a new crossover with no mileage. The fifth generation Toyota Camry sedan was produced from 2001 to 2006 only with a sedan body. We sold cars with 2.4, 152 horsepower and V6 3.0, 
186 horsepower engines, paired with a less powerful engine, a four-speed automatic was an option, and in the second case it was included as standard. In other markets, for example, in the American, a version with a 3.3-liter power unit was also offered, and in Japan, the Toyota Camry was sold only with a 2.4-liter engine and an automatic transmission, but could have all-wheel drive. Sales of this model in Western Europe were discontinued in 2004. The sixth-generation Toyota Camry was produced from January 2006 to 2011. In the CIS countries, the Camry 4.0 can be called a legendary car without exaggeration. There are a lot of them in every city and despite its advanced age, the Camry 40 remains desirable for many car enthusiasts. Why is the Toyota Camry 1540 still popular and in demand? The answer is obvious, it is incredibly reliable. Even after traveling hundreds of thousands of kilometers with minimal attention from the owner, she is ready to ride again and again. Another definite plus is the size of the Camry 40. This is a large sedan that is well suited for a small family. The features of the 2006 Camry include a spacious trunk, sufficient equipment and, which is not least important for our car enthusiast, solidity. This car does not have many chronic problems and solving them will not require large financial outlays from the owner of the Magpie. Toyota Camry 1540 is an excellent sedan that is loved by car enthusiasts all over the world. If you're considering purchasing a 2008 Camry, be sure to choose it carefully. The fame of not being killed provokes many owners to neglect the car. The new flagship of the Land Cruiser family, which appeared in 2007, immediately raised the bar for combining reliability, cross-country ability, and comfort to heights unattainable by competitors. Land Cruiser 200 is a unique example of the victory of mankind's technological achievements over the raging elements of nature. Even if it's raining or snowing outside, and there's a mud rut crunching under the wheels or rocks grumbling from behind the wheel, all this is perceived as just an interesting film in the windshield. The Land Cruiser 200 is unshakable and stable in any conditions. With the 2015 update, the car received a new front-end design and a variety of different electronic driver assistance. The car is equipped with reliable gasoline and diesel units. The V8 diesel produces 249 horsepower and provides the car not only with excellent dynamic characteristics, but also with enviable efficiency. In combination with an all-wheel drive transmission, its possibilities become simply limitless. Over the entire period of production, Toyota Land Cruiser SUVs have sold more than 10 million copies around the world. Land Cruiser 200 and Land Cruiser Prado still remain standards in their classes. Competitors are trying to emulate them, but Toyota is not going to stop there. A new Land Cruiser 300 model has been released. A lot of aluminum, updated brakes, brutal appearance, all this is the 300 of 2021. The new Land Cruiser 300 has acquired a different face, but retains the spirit of its predecessors. It tries to be like a large SUV, keeping the off-road frame but still handling like a light crossover. At the official presentation, the Land Cruiser 300 was called an all-terrain vehicle. Well, time will tell how he lives up to this title. But there is no need to doubt it. The 300 will once again elevate the Land Cruiser name to the unattainable heights of absolute superiority, and the history of these cars will receive a unique continuation. Today, Toyota is one of the world's largest car manufacturers. By far, it is also Japan's largest automaker producing more than 5.5 million cars a year, which equates to roughly one car every six seconds. But the main thing is that the company remains faithful to the Kaizen principle and continues to improve. The Toyota Group includes many companies, both automotive and involved in many different areas. In 2002, Toyota entered a new field by taking part in Formula One auto racing. Today, it intends to conquer a new industry for itself, robotics. Today, Toyota's main development in the field of robotics is the so-called partner robots. The partner robots were born out of Toyota's collaboration with a number of other companies and the Tokyo University of Technology. About 10 robots have already been presented as part of this project. 
Throughout its existence and production activities, Toyota has created more than 200 of its models. Today Toyota is one of the largest car manufacturing companies, producing, according to experts, a new car every few seconds. Toyota cars have long been extremely popular among consumers around the world. Every car manufacturing company has a goal. For some it is high profits, for others it is low prices, and for Toyota it is quality. The Japanese auto industry did not become one of the best in the world on its own. The systematic and thoughtful work of engineers, marketers, and the government has made Japan a powerful automotive power for many years. That's all, I hope you liked the video and you will not regret liking it and subscribing to the channel. See you soon.